Hi! So I'm back today with the video. We're gonna edit some photos that I took during my practice product shoots. This is not a tutorial by any means. I will just be explaining what I'm doing and you know, learning as I go as well. So if you're looking for a tutorial, this is not it. If you wanna just come along with me and edit some photos, you're in the right place. So before we get started, we actually have a sponsor today and it's not a joke. Thank you to Movavi for sponsoring this video. They're my very first one and I'm super grateful. So Movavi Video Editor Plus is a video editing software that's easy to use at an affordable price, whether you're new to editing or a seasoned pro. With its intuitive interface and built-in media such as stickers, effects, and transitions, Movavi provides you with the tools you need to create quality videos. I personally love the effect packs available in their effects store to help elevate your content. My favorite is the Milan Chic Pack. It's so cute, totally my style, and adds a nice pop of color throughout my videos. So this program is available for both Windows and Mac, and you can try it for free for seven days. The download link is in the description below, and there's also a 20% off discount code. Use code ALM21 at checkout. Now you can use Movavi for your YouTube channel, school projects, work, personal projects, whatever it is, the world is your oyster. I would highly recommend this program to people who are intimidated by video editing and don't have a professional video editor boyfriend like I do. Give it a shot and let me know what you think. And now without further ado, let's get started on some photo editing. First off, I'm going to take the patch tool and edit out all of these, like, what do you call it, highlights um, that are reflected on the bottle. So I do have a window from the left side of this image. Um, so it is reflecting onto the bottle cap. Cleaning that out just because I find that it's a little distracting and it doesn't look as clean. So I'm alternating between the content aware tool and the spot healing brush. That just kind of like takes little spots out like dust marks, scratches, little tiny things like that out pretty well. Patch tool is better for like larger pieces and blending like two patches together. I guess that's why it's called the patch tool. And then here I'm trying to get rid of this giant like white wall reflection on the back, like near the hinge of the bottle cap. So, so I'm using the clone stamp tool to just fill in that space. I'll clean it up later. As you can see, it's a little bit patchy. So that's where I use the patch tool to clean it up, just to kind of sample from the areas around it, just to smooth it all out and make it not have those like harsh blobs and lines. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, and then yeah, you can see the sun is reflecting in that spot there. So I just content aware tooled, and then there's some like bubbles from the product inside. So yeah, here I'm just trying to edit out again the wall reflection. Yeah, clean up like these highlights and reflections, just bring your photos to like a different level. I'm just gonna edit out the brand. So here I'm just using the content aware tool again. I'm sure people who are really good at Photoshop are cringing at this and seeing like, oh, I'm just doing this like a not smart way, but you know what? You do you and whatever works for you. There's like a million different ways to do something in Photoshop. Um, this is probably not the most efficient way, but this is just the way I did it and it seemed to work. So I just did it. So I got a lot of questions about these white blocks. These are just wooden blocks from the dollar store that I painted white with like acrylic paint. Would highly not recommend doing this because as you can see in certain lighting, it is super obvious the texture of the wood. Okay, so what I wanna do with these white blocks now is to obviously like get rid of all the texture, get rid of the lines and the little holes that used to house the hinge, like the screws for the hinge. So I am selecting the quick selection tool. So I selected the box there and then my screen recording app is really bad and it doesn't even record the little windows that pop up. So you can't see, I clicked filter and then went to blur and I selected surface blur. Just play around with it until it looks semi realistic or natural. Going in with the patch tool just to clean out that line um, where the box opens and the little holes. So I selected the polygonal lasso tool. Okay, so what you're doing with this tool is to section off the area you want to work on. This is really great for cleaning up lines because it helps you not kind of like color out of the lines, so to speak. 
So we're just gonna section it off first. So after that, I selected the clone stamp tool and here I'm just sampling from the area near it so I can get as close of the lighting slash color as possible. So I'm just going in now with a patch tool to blend it as much as I possibly can. So you can see the before and after, it looks so much cleaner. And this one I'll actually show you some of my color correction. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the exposure and contrast. I really like a lot of contrast in my photos. I feel like it makes your subject or the object pop. And then we're gonna go into the brightness. So the look that I'm going for for this one was a very like bright, clean edit. So I definitely wanted it to be nice and bright. In terms of color temperature, I think this just comes with practice. Um, you can see when something's a little bit too blue or a little bit too warm, sorry, a little bit too cool, or a little bit too warm, um, and then same with the tint. So some things will have a bit more of like a magenta tint, which is like the lighting that I'm in right now, or the a bit more of like a green tint. Um, and that's just like a trained eye. I don't really know like what tips to give you, but to just like study a lot of photos. Um, and see you know what tones it leans more towards and then I just am adjusting the like highlights I don't want the highlights to be too blown out um, and then I want the shadows to be a little bit more like solid um, but not like so dark that you can't see any textures so just kind of playing around with that and seeing what end result I like. And then for the hue and saturation, so I use this tool a lot. It's super useful. So I could see that there's a bit more of a cooler tone to this. So I'm just kind of like editing the blue, especially with the gray. Blues kind of get picked up from that. You can adjust like what color you want your rays to be. And then now I'm just cropping it in and getting rid of some of that negative space, but I don't want to cut off that shadow in the back, so I'm just doing kind of like a custom aspect ratio. Okay, so we're gonna start with the backdrop. So we're gonna select the polygonal lasso tool again and doing the same thing we did with the box. We're just gonna section off the area that we want to clone stamp, and this helps blend the backdrop and the surface together. It makes it look a lot cleaner. And I don't wanna to go too far to the edge with the lasso tool to where the bottle is because I'm gonna go in with um, a finer or smaller clone stamp tool to clean it up. So the hotkey to shrink and make the brush bigger is the like the square bracket tools on your keyboard. So I'm clicking the clone stamp tool and just cleaning up this red line. Um, so this is just like chromatic abrasion from I think my strobe. So just cleaning that up, obviously blending that gap from the backdrop to where the bottle is. Okay, so I'm just using the patch tool. Okay, sorry my screen like glitched here. My Photoshop was really laggy that day. Okay, so I'm just going in with the patch tool now to blend in that harsh line. Looks so much better. Um, so you'll see the difference when I move move it along and you can see like how much better that looks versus what it looks like before. So this is something that I learned from Amanda Campianu, I think is how you pronounce her name on YouTube. So if you need any resources, I would definitely check out her channel. She's amazing. I learned this tip from her. So yeah, just use a mix mixture or a combination of the patch tool and the clone stamp tool. It's not perfect, but you know what? My motto is just do your best. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks really good. The window didn't pop, or the drop-down menu didn't pop up, but what I clicked, what I did here was image, adjustments, and then brightness and contrast, and I adjusted the brightness here. So then you can see that it looks like, gives it that pop. And then I'm going back in and using the patch tool to edit out the label, or the brand, sorry. Okay, there's probably a much easier way to do this. You can probably just like clone stamp this or something, but this is what I did, or content aware, but I find that that one can be a little bit tricky sometimes if it's like there's too much too many other 
other conflicting colors or textures around it. So here I am using the quick selection tool and fixing up that box. This box was a lot better than that rectangular one I had and plus this lighting made it so the texture wasn't so obvious. So I didn't have to do the blur as much but uh, I still did the filter blur um, surface blur. Okay and I'm just going in and um, as you can see the shadow there there's like a couple like spots missing. I don't know how that happened um, but I want to fill in those little gaps of that shadow. So I'm just going in with the clone stamp tool to fill in those gaps and make it a clean line for that shadow. Okay and then just taking the spot healing brush and cleaning up any little spots of dust, scuffs, marks, anything like that. Using the patch tool to fix up the texture. So yeah that looks pretty good. That's the end result. Here's a before and after. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I also want to say thank you for all your amazing comments on my practice product photography video. That was so unexpected. I'm so happy that it inspired some of you and helped you with, in some way with your photography. Thank you so much for over 1,000 subscribers. That's insane. I just set out doing YouTube for fun and just wanted to kind of show a bit of my life. So, so I'm really happy that um, you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you enjoyed this one as well. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. Thank you again to Bobby for sponsoring this video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!